Uh, right. Well, hello to all of you in um, Og Camp Liverpool. I'm sorry I can't be with you, um, but uh, I was overcome by this appalling attack of um, <coughs> complete indifference, and so I, I couldn't make it. I'm really sorry. Um, but I, I've, I've got some questions um, here. Um, where, uh, actually, in the printer. I've just printed them out. They've been sent by one of your <coughs> geeky people. Um, and they'd like me to uh, to answer them. So, uh, do, you, do you like those, by the way? Oh, because they're magnetic. Yeah. I mean, not very geeky, but still good for an old man who has problems reading. Uh, what first got me interested in technology and what was my first computer? Well, um, it, it rewind to uh, 1981, 1982, and I'd just graduated from university. I'm in Manchester doing the first uh, television series um, that I ever did. And, and I go into a Lasky's uh, department store chain, now closed, sadly. I think they're still online, possibly, that specialised in electronics. And I saw a cluster of kids all around a, a Sinclair ZX. And, uh, and I thought, I better catch this train or I'll, I'll never, ever, I'll never, get, I'll never get there, you know. It's, it's now or never. I, I had this idea. There was this phrase, computer literacy, if you remember. Well, you're all probably too young to but <clears throat> the whole idea was you had to be computer literate. And I thought, well, I, I, I must do it. I must, I must. So I bought, in fact, a, an Acorn, a BBC microcomputer, as they were called, which was my uh, steadfast companion for two years until two or three years. Um, I added things to it, a CPM, um, a processor that allowed it to use CPM, which is a forerunner of Windows, uh, not of Windows, I beg your pardon, a forerunner of, uh, of MS-DOS. And um, then... Uh, in January 1984, um, my friend Douglas and, Adams, Douglas Adams and I queued up and bought the very first Apple Macintosh to be sold in, in Europe, in fact. And, uh, Adam, and Adams got the first, Fry got the second, which is just as it should have been. Um, and I was kind of hooked, really. Uh, what's the next question? Have I ever done any computer programming? If so, in what language or platforms did you enjoy, enjoy the experience? Well, well, I, I, weren't, I learnt BBC Basic and um, Pascal and a bit of Logo, which is a very childish but um, useful uh, language. Uh, but I never really got into the C++ or anything like that. To be perfectly simple, just because my, my arithmetic wasn't good enough. I just, I couldn't, I couldn't see when I needed to use a modulus and I don't know why the, this, you, you just have to have the maths and I didn't. So uh, I was okay at doing pretty basic things and I enjoyed it, but, but I couldn't have done anything major. Um, but I enjoyed it. God, I enjoyed it. Oh, I showed off to my friends. I said, look, look at what I can do. And I said, get my program and do this. And I built, I remember, I, I built for, for ages a, a very basic sort of LISA engine. LISA was, is a sort of a intelligent database that you ask ah, questions. an email. Oh, dear, that's my phone saying I've got an email. Um, I'll turn that to off sound-wise. Um, in, 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 interestingly, this is my uh, iPhone. Can you see that it's been pimped? It's been pimped in Norwich City colours. Isn't that cool? Did you ever see anything cooler in all your life? No, you bloody didn't. Um, anyway, um, sorry. Pathetic, aren't I? Um, what was that question? Uh, um, did I ever use Linux on any of my devices? Uh, obvious question. Yes, indeed, absolutely. I, I try to keep um, use it's Ubuntu these days. Um, it seems the friendliest, you know. Again, I, you know, I, the Unix command line or, or any command line is not uh, is not my favourite place to be. I, I just, you know, get the backslashes and the forward slashes wrong, and I get the wrong space and the debugging. So I just don't have the patience, to be perfectly honest. When you get to my age, you, you really just don't. Because you know, in the old days, when I was younger, you know, you get up to three, four, five in the morning. I'm sure you've all done it, where you just type away, type away, and you check through, and it's the, the excitement of getting a you know, um, little parameters right and so on, little calling to some procedure and uh, building up little modules of procedures that you can then use in different programs. It's a very, it's a very thrilling thing to do coding, but um, the Linux is, uh, is great. I mean, I think um, naturally it's been incredibly slow. The whole GNU and, and, and Linux experiment has been has been very slow because because it's relied on people's spare time and uh, without being an absolute um, red in tooth and claw capitalist one can understand that the the lure of uh, of, of instant cash uh, um, of money of, of, of huge salaries and vast um, you know share um, 
uh, share price uh, inflation uh, is is something that will keep people uh, concentrated with their eyes on the prize. Whereas if you're asking gifted amateurs, not amateurs, but gifted, um, what's the word? Philanthropists, I suppose, preferred to, to create a, a, a an open source system like like, like Linux, um, then you can't expect it, I suppose, to develop and and come up with new versions as, as often as it has. But uh, I love it, yeah. And the great thing is you can run it on any platform. So you, you, know, you don't need, you can run it on a, a Mac or a PC platform very easily these days. Would I describe myself as a hacker in the proper sense of the word, someone who creatively uses technology in everyday life? Um, no, I think power user is probably a better description than hacker to me perfectly honest. I, I like to get in there and get my elbows up and certainly um, compared to all my friends I would be considered a hacker. Whenever my friends have any problem with their computers, either Macs or PCs, I, I usually am the one who's called to, to help them out. It's amazing, as you know, how dumb some people are. Um, but uh, um, compared to you, I'm very dumb. I'm known as a fan of Apple. Their devices are undoubtedly shiny, but perhaps also the most locked down and restricted on the market. Does that worry me at all? Yes, it does worry me. I'll be perfectly honest with you. Um, um, this whole, yes, you know, the walled garden uh, and so on. We talk about it a lot. Well, there's just two things I'd say there. One is, imagine the whole ecosystem, in fact, if it, if it even it would exist, uh, had Apple not come up with the iPhone and then with third-party apps and then an app store. Um, uh, imagine how that ecosystem would be if there weren't tightly sealed up APIs for the keyboard and for various other features, hardware and indeed software features of, of, the, of the operating system. Uh, it would be a bloody mess of, 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 of just badly written, um, uh, destructive uh, apps and indeed malware of all kinds, uh, as we're beginning to see what more and more in, in Android. Um, and I, I don't think there's anything wrong with a company that makes its own hardware as well as its own software, which is quite rare, um, to, to want to have an absolute guarantee that the, the, the devices they make, whether they're pods or pads or um, phones or, or uh, iMacs or uh, MacBook Pros or whatever they might be, that they work across across the whole product line uh, seamlessly, and 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 I think, of course, as the cloud increases, that that, that become less and less an issue for other manufacturers. Um, but I think it, it 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 it's their right, and it's our right not to buy it if we don't like it. Um, after all, it's still that long ago. They were, they were a busted flush, and everybody said the company wouldn't exist anymore. But I do worry. I do worry that sometimes they're a bit tyrannical and a bit silly, and um, they should just loosen up in some areas. Uh, and I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a great, I'm a great believer in jailbreaking. I really admire the um, the iPhone Dev .org uh, people. I think they're absolutely incredible. And uh, what you know, uh, Cydia has, has given given the world what the what the jailbroken uh, phone community has devised over the years has entered the mainstream of, of, of Apple's um, uh, OS, whether I'd say Apple stole it or not, not be for me to, um, anyway, shush, I'll get in trouble now, my nice friends at Apple. Politics, why do I feel compelled to get involved in such cases as a Twitter joke trial or the recent case of litigation against the Hobbit pub. Well, it just, I mean, there are, sometimes one can make a difference, I think. I happened to be in the Hobbit film, and, uh, and I just thought, well, you know, this is silly. You know, the, the brutal assertion of copyright is one of the stupidest things that's happening in the world, and I've been very outspoken against it. Um, I have observed that throughout history, most creative periods in, 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 in culture have always been when there has been a, a kind of loose-ish hold on copyright. Not no copyright, but not a stranglehold. It's a bit like a bird. If you if you hold, hold it too too loosely, it'll fly away. If you hold it too firmly, you, you'll strangle it. And I think it's the same with creativity. Um, and I think music companies and film companies and um, just as sponsors of the Olympic Games can make fools of themselves and, and actually do all to undo all the work that their branding is supposed to be supposed to be favoring them with. They can undo it all by being stupid, by having lawyers who just see something and you know, Lucas films or whatever will see some artist in Devon has got a little display of watercolours they've done of scenes on the ice planet Hoth and then they get a cease and desist letter. 
letter from uh, Marin County, San Francisco, from George Lucas's lawyers, saying they'll be sued. I mean, you just think, oh, come on, you idiot. You just make people think, as if people don't hate you enough for the, for the last three films you made. Um, uh, he's got to do that. It's such a pity. It's just a bit of common sense, a bit of, a bit of getting your ear to the ground and realising there are the times when it's appropriate to act on behalf of your, um, you know, the work you've done and the innovations you've made. And there are times when sharing is the best thing to do. Um, and when it comes to the Twitter joke trial, again, it's you'll be amazed at the ignorance of lawyers and, um, and our ruling political classes when it comes to social um, networks and um, and the whole the whole nature of it all. And after the Spartacus moment in which everybody tweeted the identical tweet, the identical threat to Robin Hood Airport that Paul Chambers made, um, it was obvious that the law had been made a fool of. And like all weak fools, instead of backing down, they just became more stubborn. A strong person would have backed down gracefully and said, OK, we've got to look at this, we'll go to Parliament, we'll find out a way of judging whether something is clearly true. what in the opinion of an ordinary man, which is, uh, it may sound um, uh, like a strange phrase, but the reasonable man is, is a figure used in the common law, which is used both in America and in Britain and in hundreds of other jurisdictions around the world. The, the reason, would a reasonable man think that that tweet was a threat? And the answer is so obviously no. And uh, it just, just drives me insane. When, and the man lost his job, you know, and he lost money and he's got a political, he's got a, um, a conviction. Uh, you know, it's all just so damn stupid. But I'm, I'm speaking before the judgment, final judgment comes out, so I'm very hopeful that Lord Chief Justice will actually see sense. Bloody hope so. Come on, get through these. Um, do I see the future of the web as a tiered society with subnet, subnets being used to subvert government control and monitoring more as it, as it was intended an open expanse for users to explore? Well, it wasn't intended as an open expanse for users to explore, to be honest. The net just grew organically, as you know, from DARPA and other sorts of things. But um, it, there's, there's a kind of irony in the fact that in the mid-90s, um, uh, AOL and CompuServe and things like that were were the place to be and they'd sort of the web once Tim Berners-Lee and and the World Wide Web came out then the net suddenly became a really rich environment and so AOL which was a you know a private uh, as it were a, a, a consumer um, uh, closed that way to call it a closed forum you know uh, um, an online community um, uh, offered an internet ramp so that you could dial up your 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 AOL number and then not just be inside the AOL program you know, the client program on your on your Mac or PC but you would also be able to get through to the the internet proper and then AOL was everywhere it was huge and if you if Steve Case, who founded it, had um, not been so busy counting his money and had just looked up and sniffed the wind, he would have seen that essentially he would have migrated AOL into Facebook because, <laughs> you know, every poster in the mid-1990s would have keyword, AOL keyword, this film, or, you know, or AOL keyword, Marmite or something. Um, and and uh, now it just has uh, the Facebook equivalent. And, and 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 Facebook is really just AOL, but but um, uh, brushed up uh, for for the modern user generated content world, for the you know web two 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 point zero whatever you want to call it. Um, so that's uh, that's an interesting question ish. Uh, I supported document freedom days, stood up for open standards. Why do they matter to me? Well, common sense again, you know. I mean things like uh, Firewire or I iLink as Sony called it or IEEE 3459 or whatever it was originally called. These standards uh, are often developed in the private sector. Um, sometimes like Vog Orbis, of Og Vorbis, I should say. Og, 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 Og Vorbis. Um, uh, they take a bit of time to trickle down. The average man in the street hasn't heard of Og Vorbis, but they will have benefited from some of the developments that have gone into it. And uh, I think that's always the case. But it's very important that the standards are open. And uh, I think HTML5 will be a giant leap forward. Uh, and uh, we can say goodbye to Silverlight and QuickTime and uh, Flash and um, uh, Real Player and, and so on, or at least more or less goodbye to them. Um, which is not to say they haven't served their turn very well indeed, and they've, they've all come up with their own sort of innovations. Um, but HTML5 will 
when it finally, finally gets goes through all its committee stages, well, well, I think uh, to change change the environment enormously. Uh, yeah. So, part three: random silliness. Uh, if I could be a dinosaur, what would you be? Archaeopteryx. Oh, definitely an archaeopteryx. I think because it's you know you can fly, but you've got feathers and and you're not you're not sort of creepy and glidy like a like a pterodactyl. So I think archaeopteryx has got to be the answer. I've ever been to the North Pole? Did I meet Santa? Oh dear, no. The furthest north I've ever been is um, uh, Barrow, Alaska, which is the northernmost part of the United States of America. It's in, in, in the Arctic Circle. And it was, I can tell you, um, it was very cold, actually. Yeah. Um, otherwise, no, no, never met Santa, at least I don't think so. Not to my knowledge. Um, um, uh, that's it. Those are all the questions. Well, there you are. Sorry I was such a blathering um, idiot. Um, at the time is already good heavens and I'm as good gracious. So uh, enjoy everything. And I really, really wish I was there. And I just have a fantastic time. Lots of love. Bye.